Today's Mental Health Minute applies in life, applies in everything. Loss of situational awareness. How do you know when you've lost situational awareness? What is situational awareness? And how do you get it back? Gonky, I'm going to let you have the floor first. I always oh, talk geez. first. So. <clears throat> All right. Well, what are the three questions? How do you know you've lost SA? Well, a lot of times man, you don't. You don't. Until, <laughs> right. That's, that's, that's the. How do you uh, recognize it? Yeah. A lot of times you recognize it by an outside input because loss of SA is basically your perception of reality isn't reality. Right. So whatever is causing that, if we're talking about airplanes, if we're, you know, trying to process radar data and, and whatnot, uh, your perception of what's going on might not be real. And then maybe a, uh, your wingman or whatever comes in with uh, some new information via radio call that you're like, Oh, wait a minute. Right. And it kind of puts the train back on the tracks. So, I mean, it could be super dangerous, man, because if uh, you're not living in the real world, I mean, whether you're flying an airplane or, or not, uh, you know, it can, it can hurt you for sure. Well, I'm betting, I know you've got a great story. It's tough to tell. I'll, I'll be honest, man, this whole time I've been thinking about it and, uh, I don't know if you guys know it, but I know, um, I don't talk about it much cause it was a big deal. Um, like my folks don't even know. So if they're watching, they might want to <laughs> turn this one off. Uh, but we were in Fallon, um, as air wing and, you know, Gonky knows, I mean, you guys have both been to Fallon, but, um, air wing, you know, you're kind of you're kind of at the tip of your spear, I guess, before deployment, you know, like you're feeling really good. And we all felt that way. And we were doing our, our tactics. I'll never forget. It, it was one of the last flights I was going to do on that debt. And, um, we've been practicing these things all month, you know, really all workups. And, uh, and, you know, I flew a lot. God, it's hard to tell. I flew, um, lot 12s, you know, and, and they weren't the best, obviously, um, mids, not the best, you know, but, but we had gotten really good working together and I was flying with my, my skipper and we're doing our tactics and essentially we'd come in and we'd dive to the deck and then pass a certain point, climb back up, turn around, you know, we were basically supporting each other that way. And, and we got botched and, um, and, you know, I'm looking, I'm, I'm, I'm going out and it's like one of the last outs I'm going to do and getting long gas and, you know, your mind goes to, okay, I got RTB soon, all this stuff. And, you know, I hope I got all my notes for the debrief and all that. And I look at mids cause I'm assuming the other plane is gone, coming back in high. And, uh, I see the mids track right in front of me and I'm like stupid mids. And then all of a sudden I look out and I have a face full of Hornet. Um, and because the only way I can describe this, the only reason I did this is because on the out, I was supposed to go down. So the only thing I did was unload and he went right over the top of me. Um, and you talk about, you know, some external force, um, snapping you out of it. It was, it was Betty screaming, pull up. And, um, you know, it took full, full half stick grunt. Um, you know, they pulled the tapes after and it rat out was less than a hundred feet at the bottom out. Um, Ooh. I mean, you know, it, there's, I mean, they, they, they talked about it, you know, within the air wing, within a squadron. And, and I mean, it was, uh, you know, it was like a second left if I hadn't pulled up when I did. Um, and you know, it was, it, dude, it was tough. It's still tough. I mean, you could probably tell, I don't like talking about it. And, but I learned a lot about situational awareness because I, looking back on it, I could see identifiers that I was losing my situational awareness, like about 15 minutes leading up to that. My mind was other places. And since that moment, you know, whether it's, um, when I was still flying fighters or T 45s, or even now in the airlines, like I could recognize those same things about me and, and I could, I could snap out of it very quickly now. Um, and, uh, there were subsequent, uh, emergencies I've had, and things like that, that I think I actually survived because I was able to recognize, you know, Hey, I'm losing my essay, focus on what you can focus on. And, and like mover said, it doesn't, it's not just aviation. I mean, you know, how many people have um, been driving 
a car that has the collision assistance or something like that. And that catches them off guard, right? They didn't see a car and all of a sudden it's, you know, it's breaking for you or it's doing something or it's alerting you and you're like, you've lost situational awareness. Right. So, I mean, it could be every day in your life and, and it's, thank God I learned the lesson and I wasn't, you know, somebody's memorial page or, you know, something like that. Um, but there's, I mean, I, I absolutely should have been, and it's a hundred percent. I lost situational awareness to what I was doing and, and, um, and that was it. I mean, so it's huge. I mean, I think it's probably one of the scariest things in aviation to lose. Um, but I think it's really tough if you don't recognize it, you know, kind of like when we talk about, you know, we were always trained, at least I was, you guys were with hypoxia, you know, know your symptoms. What do you see in yourself when you start to lose these things? And I don't ever really remember that with situational awareness. Like what are your tendencies? And I've talked to people and I've talked to doctors about it since. And they say that we have tendencies um, with situational awareness where when you start to lose it, it's the same for you, regardless of the situation, whether it's in aviation, whether you're driving your car or you're, you know, doing whatever you, you lose the same kind of insights in the same order, the way your brain works, which is pretty interesting. So luckily I've learned from it. Um, thank God I obviously made it out. Um, you know, it's the, the question that I got asked a lot after is why didn't I pull the, the paddle? <laughs> and I guess my situation there or my brain, I didn't want to get trouble for a jet. I mean, that's, I know it sounds stupid, but, but yeah, it was close. It really was. So. Wow. Yeah. The first thing you usually lose is your hearing. That's, yeah. that's like across the board. we we brief that we talk about that because you'll start missing radio calls. You'll start missing what people are saying. And it's the same thing. I mean, when you say radio calls, you know, I can talk to like sheriff's office stuff, you know, when you're out on patrol because you're listening to the radio, you're trying to build a picture where everybody is and everything, much like you do in, in flying fighters. And first thing it goes, hey, you missed a call. You missed a key up. You missed something. Uh, you know, I'm sure any any profession where communication is key, that's usually first thing. And so, you know, going back to the whole situational awareness, right? It's the understanding of your surroundings and, and your environment. What's going on? You know, you're, you're, pro you're processing all this information and building a picture in your mind of what's happening. And when it starts to break down, we lose that sense and we kind of get stuck in our own world. A great example, I would say, Gonky, you and I, probably the T-38, right? Because you, when we first started, when I first started and you first started, you know, we didn't have iPads with TCAS and, you know, the, the ADSB tracks and all that stuff. You didn't know where anybody was unless you were listening. And yeah. they always used to tell you, you know, the first thing when you start to lose situational awareness, you know, cause you're, all you have is your hearing. Yep. First thing you need to do is get back in your block. And what a block is, is an altitude assignment that you're, you're given and you're, you know, that if I'm in this place, I should be safe. Now, granted what happens when two people lose SA, sometimes they run into each other. And the T-38 was the first place where we're teaching ACM tactics, air combat maneuvering. It was the first place that I had learned, you know, if engage supporting fighter. But if you're in a fight, 2v1, and you lose SA and the other guy is doing a thing, you just get out. You remove yourself from the fight because three people where one has no SA, one's trying to fight the other, and they can't keep track of each other, it's safer to just extricate yourself from this situation. And sometimes, even in life, that, that's the goal. Go to your safe place, not safe space, but your safe place. What it, Go back to what you know and then work your way back out. Build that picture yeah. once again by, you know, just like the task saturation, you have to build it block by block to get yourself. And sometimes it's, hey, a cool question, you know, if you're calm permitting. Sometimes it's just, look, I'm just going to remove myself from this fight. No harm, no foul, because I am not helpful when I am what we call tumbleweed. You know, when I don't know what's going on, I've completely lost situational awareness. I got to get out. I got to get out of the situation and then we either build range and regroup or get out altogether so that you can do it. I mean, we do the same thing. We call them cold ops, right? What happens, you know, you're, you're going down range, you know, you're, you're facing a threat, you lose the picture, you don't know what's happening in front of you. So you go cold and that works in life too, where you're facing some situation, you're facing some threat. And it's starting to get overwhelming and you're starting to lose what's happening in front of you. So you go, okay, let's, let's build some separation from this. Let's give me some time. I need some time away from this so that I can open that aperture back up 
start listening again and then figure out what's going on. I mean, one of the times I lost situational awareness just when I was in the field training program, we came up on a, a car with a guy inside and I'm just like, he's like, Hey, shine your spotlight on him. So I'm like, okay, cool. Next thing I know, I look over and my FTO has got his gun drawn and I'm like, what, holy shit, what are we, what are we doing? You know? And I'm like, okay, I guess so. And yeah. cause it was a guy that was not cooperating. He was, uh, very inebriated in his car at two o'clock in the morning, you know, wouldn't show his hands. And we didn't know if he was reaching for something or whatever. And I, I tell that story. I mean, nothing ended up happening. We actually ended up giving the right guy a ride home because, you know, we just wanted to help the dude. But in that initial moment of what the hell is going on, my situational awareness went to zero. Like I thought I had this understanding of what this picture was. And then I look at over and this was a guy that had been shot before. So this is a dude that's on his heightened awareness because he, he kind of knows the situation. So for me, that realization like, hey, okay, I need to have a higher sense of realization myself. But also when I'm in a situation, I can also use context clues to get myself back in the, in the fight. You know, I can see what other people are doing. I can use those clues to kind of, okay, this is a dangerous situation. I need to use cover. I need to do this. And it's just wh wherever you're at, sometimes you have to bring a friend in. You have to do that phone a friend, whether you even talk to him or just observing to get that picture back of what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I can't agree more. You, you mentioned the loss of what you can hear. Um, when we did the debrief in my situation, there was two and a half minutes of tape where I didn't respond. It was about, it was in, a, in about a minute and a half of that was prior to the merge and the, and the pull up, pull up. So I had, my essay was shot long before I even turned cold and, and went out. So, uh, I can't, yeah, I, I can't agree more, man. And, and I can imagine in your situation, that's pretty damn scary, uh, to, to well, really not realize you're in that situation, but yeah. Well, and you know, Hey, the other thing is, you know, if you're the, if you're the one with the essay in life, yeah. flying or whatever, you know, make it, Help Make your it a responsibility to help your buddy out. You know, I mean, in Wombat, in your case, your electronic buddy helped you out. Yeah. Right. I mean, but we do. We, that's a great point. We do that as wingmen, as flight leaders. Yeah. Wingmen, oh, 100%. Right? When, when, like, Gonk, you remember that time I had the AMAD pressure and, yep. you know, you and I are flying? Dude, we're backing each other up. Yep. You know, I mean, yeah. you're keeping me from losing situation awareness because you're like, hey, we're this far from the field. Where yeah. are we at in the checklist? How are we going to rec yeah. recover? You're task yeah. saturated, right? So, I mean, it's yeah. easier. You're more susceptible to becoming, uh, to losing SA just because you're not, you're out of your element and you're task saturated. Yeah. That's one of the things yeah. I love in my current job of teaching where, you know, you get people that aren't as familiar with our background and they'll make the the general stereotype like, oh, <clears throat> single seat fighter pilots, they don't know CRM and they don't know how to work together. And I'm like, I disagree. I, I think it was in a lot of respects, a lot easier in the Hawkeye when I can physically reach over to talk to my co-pilot to have that CRM, <clears throat> sorry, compared to when you're in a different jet. And, um, and it was, it was my skipper who, you know, after I obviously recovered, but he was, he got back on me and got my head back in the game. And so I think it's very difficult when you're single seat um, cause the communication barriers there, you're not right next to the person. And, and yeah, it's huge. And I agree hundred percent in life. Um, you know, I've said this before on this channel and, and I, I believe it. I mean, we're in times right now where people are struggling big time and you don't know, um, you don't know, you don't know the person you're dealing with and what they're going through, you know, whether that's the person ahead of you in the grocery line or ahead of you at the gas station or, or a best friend of yours. And the best thing that you can do, in my opinion, is, is, is to try to be empathetic to it. And if they're missing the forest through the trees, because whatever they're in is so bad, that there's no way they can get out of it, you know, be that light that shows them, Hey man, like at, win every battle. Right. I mean, every step, you know, sometimes we've all been in situations where, you know, it's not even getting through the day, it's getting through the hour, it's getting through the minute, it's getting through the damn second, but that's a win. Right. And you as the person with situational awareness to the, to the situation can bring that to them and go, Hey, just let's get through this step together. And then the next step together and like mover saying it broadens them back out. And they could take a look at the whole picture and go, you know what? You're right. I have a chance. And that's really all you're trying to do is, is give your buddies a chance. Well, you're a concise, correct. Right. Com. 
Yeah, and Wombat, you bring up a good point, dude. I mean, outside of the, outside of the cockpit, I think a lot of times, and the you know, outside of flying, as far as losing SA and like like you say, with people struggling mentally, it's a it's a hard time to believe anything you hear, right? So just like in the airplane, if you get bad information, you are going to lose SA, right? And it's kind of like in the real world, like like you have to you have to feed your brain good information for you to be able to properly handle whatever's actually in front of you or mentally going on or whatever. And it's, it, we're in a, we're in a time when that's, I would argue is pretty challenging, um, especially with social media and the regular media. And, you know, people are, are really scratching their heads. They don't know what to believe, what to trust. And that really forms your perception of reality and it can affect your mood and your mental state. You know, I mean, that's a, you bring up a great point, man. So, I mean, it's trying times. That's for sure. You got to own your mind. I, I always say that you got to own your mind that yeah. that's Make six sure, inches yeah. between your ears. If you can't own that space. Yeah. That doesn't you matter control, what you're going through. You got to control what, what you feed your brain. Yeah. Bad sure. essay is worse than no essay. Yeah, that's true. That's true. A hundred percent, man. hundred percent. That's true. I mean, look at all the mishaps we have where the, they just had bad information. Like people 100%. were working off of terrible assumptions. Yeah. Or, and, I mean, even your basic private pilot, right? I mean, he, he gets, you know, he, uh, his attitude gyro tumbles and the, and the visibility is not bad and he just, right. It's bad yep. info. It, it'll kill you. Well, let's go back to the MiG-23. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Two different levels of situational awareness. We don't know who's right. We don't know who's wrong, but. That's right. They were yeah. different. That's for sure. They were very different, you know, and they didn't communicate because it becomes communication. You know, um, if, if you can't talk to your wingman guy in the cockpit or whatever, Wombat, to your point about talking about it's easier in an airliner. The other piece to that, too, is if I'm trying to give my crew member situational awareness, uh, autopilot aside, that's somebody else who can fly the jet. Yeah. Correct. If you're single seat, all he could do is talk. I remember, you know, the, the, the lightning strike, uh, VFA 204, dude, I, I, all I could do was watch and talk, you know, when he was incapacitated and I'm just talking him around the pattern and flying as close as I could to try to say, Hey, you know, let's put the thing on the thing and, and do this. Yeah. I, I couldn't take the airplane from him. Like when no. he said, when he came up ox and said, and we were in a, a right hand turn at 450 feet, turning towards a runway, and he said, This is hard, and he slurred it. I'm like, dude, I'm about to watch something very, mm. very bad here. And there's nothing you can do but keep, but say, Okay, I'm gonna have to be the calm one and keep talking. And you know, just try to build this picture. Okay, airspeed, altitude, aim point, all that stuff. And that's what we have to do as our our friend, you know. If we if we see our friend spiraling down. And they, they have bad information. We have to give them good information. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Oh. I agree. Douglas, you got anything from the practitioner slash expert perspective? I, I was listening to this one to learn. I didn't have much to much to add. <laughs> I've, I've been in way too many situations where I've lost SA and the, the thing that brought me back almost killed me. So I, I wanted to know how to, how to fix that. Well, you see it. I'm sure you see it teaching race car students. Oh, Man, yeah. And what I've seen I mean, is that helicopter pilots have got SA for days. <laughs> <laughs> that's because they can just news. hover. That's that fake news. <laughs> you can stop. Yeah, that's not. Okay. Know, it that's was an Apache true. pilot that I'm, that I'm thinking. <laughs> well, of. that's a different. Yeah, yeah that's a real. Nick Cage. Cage. That's a real. Nick Cage, and he about. had that Corvette and everything, of course. No. no. The, the, the guy he was is the greatest. The, the guy was telling me where the other cars were. He said, did you see that flag at turn three? Yeah. <laughs> but race car is a great example of losing yeah, situational absolutely. awareness because remember Daytona, we had 120 yeah, we something saw it with cars cold on trickle, track? right? No, is that not where you're going? Daytona? Well, and there's, it, I think it's a good analogy because there's a lot of factors that come into play like fatigue and, oh, yeah. and you know, weather conditions and traffic. And if you're just out there driving around for a while and suddenly you come up on some traffic or it gets dark, things change. So yeah, yeah. maybe I can relate, yeah. but oh yeah, I'm uh, sure a lot of good advice. Good. All right. But if somebody yeah, says pull else? up, pull up, yeah. period. Even, even if out. you're in a race car. <laughs> up or out. Either way. Good advice. <laughs> sorry. All I'm right. Sorry. 
Moving on. <laughs> He's not wrong. I mean, He's not wrong. No. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. We got, either one uh, can save your life. It's basically. <laughs> save your life and your bank account. Trigger 118 <laughs> says, love the channel, guys. You guys have got me through some hard times, so to speak. Oh, sorry. That's a serious thing. Hard times I'm going through. Keep up the amazing work. Sorry you're going through that stuff, Trigger. Yeah, man. Um, well, we need to have some fun, man. This was deep. It's Hold on. Bad. One more that pitch for the, for the mental health, because I always say this. Oof. Look, if you're struggling by yourself, if you're struggling in general, get help. Talk to somebody. Don't, don't try to fight this battle alone. Um, there are options for you. Even if it's calling 911, don't ever make a temporary problem permanent. You know, don't lose SA to the point that you're just going to end it all because you felt like you couldn't get it back because there's always light. There's always another life that waits for you that you can reinvent yourself, make it better, do something cool. Just, just don't, don't do that. Cause there are people that care about you. Um, no matter what, somebody's going to have to pay that price if you'd make that decision and it's not worth it. It's just not. So that, there you go. All right. Sorry. I had to do that because that's important to talk about it is. every time. Uh, Douglas, what else we got? We have make them tell you no. I don't have any make them tell you no. We have any more chats because okay. I think that's the end of the show well, after that. caught up. All right. Let's really? see. Wait, we've got, we've got one. That Jason. One. Jason. Speak, Thanks, speaking man. of loss of SA, have you guys had to have gone in a flow state where your brain just goes autopilot on where you just did something very complex? That's the whole point of training. Yep. I'll tell you mine. Uh, Doug, you'll probably like this one. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, so when I was in pilot training, I've, the, the, the HUD video is actually on the channel somewhere. I was on my second or third solo, the formation solo, where it's you and then the instructor and a student. So your solo formation. And it was my, my next door neighbor advance and my flight commander in one jet. They were leading and I was the wing on the formation takeoff. And at rotation, worst part in a T-38, hot, hot day. Uh, bird goes right down the right between us, gets in the intake and compressor stalls. And you talk about t flow state slash temporal distortion. I did the bull face and had no idea I did it because everything after that was automatic. It wasn't until I got on the ground, I'm like, did I try to abort? Like, I honestly had, like, I was worried. I thought, I'm like, well, I'm going to hook this ride, because I thought that I had ripped the throttles to idle and tried to stop and then kept going. But if you watch the tape, it would have been impossible to take off had I done that, because by the time I got airborne, the gear's up, you know, I'm out of runway. And it was just because, because of that. But that temporal distortion of time standing still, your brain goes into, oh, I'm just, I got this. You know, I've trained this so many times, you know, throttles the max, flap 60, attain CEDOS minimum. And I did it. I mean, I even watched the nose push over and it was all automatic. It was all just my brain based on the training. It just did it. And that was, that always stuck with me because I'd heard of guys, you know, they ejected or they had gone through things and. It just, everything was automatic or time slowed down or whatever. So I think there's a little bit of both temporal distortion and flow state in that you're just, you, you don't remember doing it. You're just like, well, it must have happened. Wombat. Like I've you. had, I mean, you and I have talked about some of my incidents, both in the E2, the Hornet, T45. You know, I've talked about them on your channel and just as friends, we've all talked. But I'll tell you, like my brain, when I have SA, and I, I don't know if this is just dumb luck, it probably is. It's not skill, but like I, it goes into a place I can't even describe. I think of the most bizarre things because I have such a hyper focus. I mean, I still to this day remember when I couldn't turn the Hawkeye left on landing because of a hydraulic issue, the center line call, the backup LSO made. And he was a, he's a friend of mine. And I, I remember thinking to myself, great call, bro. Like, I mean, to think of that in the moment, but it's etched in there. Like it'll always be us in there. And it was a great call, but like, so that's what I think this is, is you, but I, I agree with mover. And it's one of the things, you know, as an airline pilot, but also as an instructor and some would argue more an instructor than an airline pilot, frankly, but the, um, that's what worries me about aviation training in general. It doesn't matter if it's civilian military or whatever. It's like you, every minute 
that you cut out of any aviation training pipeline, you're taking away some of what mover just described that, that whether it's flow state, muscle memory, you know, there's a lot of, you know, you're on brainstem power. I've heard that before, which I had a girlfriend once explained to me how it's actually not brainstem power. Cause that's not the part of your brain. We didn't work out by the way. I don't know if that <laughs> shocks you. Um, that relationship didn't last very long, but, um, it, it's all of that is why you need that time, you know? So when you get people starting to look at it from a money standpoint and go, ah, we could take this out. We could take this out. You can until you can't. And that's what worries me. So I shared this on the Twitter, uh, Dave Grossman, fine American on training. You don't rise to the occasion in combat. You sink to the level of your training. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree. I've heard various, there's various iterations, you know, you don't, you don't rise to the occasion. You fall back on your training, all that stuff. And it's true. There's, there's been many and one that will hundred percent agree with this part of your job as an LSO is to make sure, you know, I think I'm high, you know, you think I'm low. I listen to you kind of thing, right? There's been a lot of night traps I've done where, clearly my perception of where I'm at and where this airplane is going is not real based on the calls I'm getting. And, you know, somehow I, I trap, right? So, I mean, it's kind of, it's a complex procedure. There's a lot of stuff going on. People line up in attack nighttime, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. And it is kind of amazing now that I think about it, I never really thought about it until you guys mentioned those stories, but uh, yeah, I guess I, I don't go. <laughs> I'm not sure where I go, man, but the training you go kicks somewhere. In. You go yeah, somewhere. the training kicks in, and like you said, man, you land, and I think that's how. Went. I mean, I used to get the shakes in the legs after after Same. if it was a particularly scary night, but Same. adrenaline um, dump. Yeah, yeah, and that might be it, man. It might just be adrenaline taking over. You know, it's the fight or flight or whatever. But yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of your brain's trying to protect you, man. Like you, dude, you don't remember half the night. Landing, Dang, dude, dude I'm getting. Dude. I'm uh, you getting a little sweaty. A little whew, yeah, turn the lights out in Donkey's room. <laughs> is that a new shirt or is that the same blurry one from last time? Oh, uh, it's your vision, dude. This is a brand new one. It's crystal clear. <laughs> yeah, just like my you shirt. Get, you might want to get yeah. your VA rating and eye, eyeballs checked out, man. <laughs> this one's fixed. Mover ruins his 40s. <laughs> mover, run. mover ruins mover. <laughs> <laughs> 